Okay, good morning. Hello, everyone, and thank you for being with us here this morning. I also welcome participants who are with us online. Um, for this session, good practices linked to competence development of career guided practici practitioners. My name is Dorian Gravina, and I am the um, Euroguidance representative for Malta. Um, I'll be starting off with a short presentation and then introducing you to colleagues from Slovakia, Hungary and Serbia who will be um, sharing examples of good practices from their end. Okay, so in this presentation I plan to give a short overview of um, what the Good Guidance Practices database is all about um, uh, with, and, and also hope to explain to you how um, career guidance practitioners, how policymakers can benefit from the use of this database. Uh, it is a database which is found on the euroguidance.eu website. I will go into more detail later on about this. And um, hopefully then you will have here some um, real examples uh, which can be found also on the website of, of um, uh, good practices. So, um, what, what is the database all about? Well, the, the good practices database is a section, it is a dedicated section um, on the website which, with the aim of collecting, showcasing and presenting selected examples of career guidance practices from across Europe. Um, the, generally what we do is we ask national centers who are part of the Euroguidance network um, to submit practices they consider as relevant following a set of guidelines which we provide. Uh, we are aware that an important issue when you are collecting and showcasing good practices is um, trying to identify the best way to identify which are the best practices for sharing. So um, we have a set of guidelines which help countries decide which practices uh, to put forward. Um, guidelines include that the practice um, uh, has been delivered within the last five years, that it enables learning amongst the guidance community, that um, it is based or it has a sound theoretical background, and it is in line with European priorities amongst others. So um, selected practices are then vetted by a small team um, who review the practice. Um, it may re the practices may require some editing and then they are finally published on the website. So why collect good practices? Um, we think as um, a Euroguidance network, uh, one of our aims is, is uh, of the network is that of strengthening the competence development um, of the guidance community. So uh, we feel that by um, showcasing these good practices, countries um, and even career guidance practitioners can become informed of these practices and these practices can provide insight, they can provide learning, um, they can contribute also um, towards creating a learning community of guidance practitioners. Moreover, um, everybody, um, I think it is very important that we um, showcase our work so it provides countries also the opportunity to um, showcase the work which is done on a national level. So there you can see um, the page where you can find the database. When you log on to the Euroguidance website, you can go to the tab which, which um, um, indicates uh, resources. You click on the tab and, uh, and there, uh, one of the tabs is in fact entitled Good Practices. And the advantage of this um, um, database is that you can search and filter the, the practices 
listed using the a set of criteria which you can see there on the screen and which I will go through quickly um, to, so you understand exactly how the database works. So one of the search criteria is searching uh, good practices by country. Um, uh, as you can see there, identified many countries, in fact, have presented, uh, are, are presented, uh, have presented their good practices. We have EU countries, um, including EEA member states and EU candidate countries who are part of the Euroguidance network. Um, we have at least one or more practices from each country who uh, is part of the Euroguidance network. There you can see a list of the countries uh, who have submitted uh, one or more practices. Uh, the target group. Um, another advantage of this database is that one can uh, search practices um, by looking at the target group for which the good practice is intended. So this is uh, quite advantageous, it is be beneficial as it helps you to search for those practices which you, you are interested in. And there are uh, practices uh, relate to a number of target groups. It, you, you can um, look for practices which are relevant uh, to, for students within the primary, secondary, post-secondary, for parents, employers, job seekers, disadvantaged groups, and many others. The context. So, um, good practices are also um, categorized by context where the practices can be applied. And as you can see there, the contexts are various. So if you perhaps work in the school sector, you may be more interested in searching for practices where you um, can apply within the school sector and you can get ideas, you can get insights, um, you can get more information on the website because there are links to the specific practice. You can even contact this, the country to get more information. So um, there uh, you, you can get a lot of um, uh, more information uh, on the particular uh, practice which is being showcased. The focus, the focus, the team, there are many teams um, which are um, available. Practices are in fact um, uh, referenced according to the team. Uh, teams are various, uh, with ca you, you, ca you have good practices which refer to the issue of career development, so it regards to teams related to career management skills, the transition of students, uh, career information, uh, topics related to mobility, access to guidance services, the issue of quality assurance, um, uh, cooperation and coordination, there you can see the picture, that's one of our practices from Malta, where uh, we, uh, this is an annual event where we um, ask um, representatives from the employment and the education sector who meet together to discuss issues which are common to the po both sectors. Um, so, as you can see, um, the teams um, um, are, are various. So, what type of practices can one find? Pra the, the t it very different types of practices. You can have interventions, you can have, for example, um, uh, one to one session uh, practices which refer to one to one sessions, to, um, as you can see on the screen, career fairs, um, practical manuals, frameworks and many others. Funding, there is also a short reference on how the practice is funding and whether it includes funding from Erasmus Plus or whether it includes, it, the practice relates to an international fund. Uh, it, there is also reference to the mode of delivery. Uh, there are different types of practices. Some are face-to-face, -face, others are, are uh, remote, using ICT, website, web tools, use of, of social media. So um, you can find a variety of practices. Um, I would like to, in, in fact, invite you all to have a look at the database, hopefully get inspired, and if you feel that you from your own context um, uh, are, are think of having 
that you have a good practice which you would like to share with the international community, feel free to contact your Euroguidance Center and they can help you on how to uh, fill in a, a, a template which is not complicated at all um, and that would help us to um, increase the number of good practices which can be shared internationally. Um, I'm sure that after uh, you will hear the real examples, I think you will be more uh, enticed to share your practices. In fact, I now move on to um, um, sharing, inviting my colleagues who will share their good practice. Uh, we will start off from um, the first colleague from Slovakia, um, Ladislav Ostroha, who is a colleague, and he will be sharing his um, um, example of good practice, he will be giving us more information about the National Career Guidance Awards in Slovakia. Thank you. Hello everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Laci Ostroha. I, I represent the uh, Slovak Euro Guidance Center and I'll be talking more about National Career Guidance Awards at the, European, uh, at the European level, what's the idea behind uh, National Guidance Awards, why we are doing them, and, uh, and then I'll share some of the specifics of our uh, this year's uh, competition. Um, so, um, I'm sure you, you probably know that uh, it's not, uh, the, the competition is not only held in, in Czech Republic, but it's held in, uh, in other four countries, in Slovakia, Hungary, Latvia, and the Republic of Serbia. Uh, up until now, we, we've had uh, collectively uh, 41 national awards and four international conferences, this one being one of them. Uh, the, the competition originated in 2009 in uh, Slovakia and Czech Republic. So uh, this is you know, quite some history, 14 years of this competition, which really uh, proves that it's a well-established and well-recognized uh, initiative uh, not only in our countries, but also uh, at the European level. And uh, over those 14 years, we've had uh, over, 900, uh, over 900 applications and uh, around 240 awarded practices. And this is, of course, counting as we want to organize National Care Guidance Awards also in uh, years to come. Uh, some of the main principles of the uh, award are very brief. Uh, to, to let more space to, to, to the colleagues and representatives of the awarded practices from, from uh, different European countries. The main principle is the identification of good practices. That, that's why we are doing it. We, uh, we do these awards to, to keep track of what's going on in our national communities, uh, to identify those good practices, and then al also to recognize them. So the recognition is, is one of the main principles, is one of the main things why are we doing this, why we are doing this, because people who, uh, who receive the awards really deserve recognition, really deserve all the praise be for their remarkable efforts and for the remarkable job they're doing in care guidance. And then we are trying to work with those recognized and awarded practices. We issue publications where there are descriptions of those practices. We administer a joint database, which Dorian mentioned. We invite them to training events, to conferences as this one. Here in Prague, we, we also have some of the awarded practices uh, from this year's competition in Slovakia. So we're really trying to work with them and, and also to share the inspiration, uh, not only at national level, but also uh, at European level. And I think this, this, this conference is well, is a proof of that, that, uh, that we do that at, at, uh, at European level. And ultimately, uh, National Care Guidance Awards are about community, about bringing people together. Uh, the, the, the comfort, the, each award is usually concluded by the award ceremony, which is a very nice opportunity to bring all, not only awarded practices, but all, uh, all authors of, um, of submitted, submitted entries to the, to the one space, share, laugh, you know, join, sh share those. Uh, uh, share those moments and, and really celebrate uh, what we are doing in, in, in care guidance. Um, so these are the main principles, just some of the types of awarded practices. It's quite, it's quite diverse as also care guidance is quite a diverse field. Uh, we usually have care development programs for youth, uh, counseling for disadvantaged groups, training of counselors themselves, then various online tools, games, 
handbooks and pu uh, publication and re this really shows that new technologies new approaches are penetrating the care guidance uh, care guidance field so the, the the portfolio of of those practices is 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 still growing um, if you want to know more about the last year's uh, last year's competition in four countries in Slovakia Czechia Latvia and the Republic of Serbia we issue uh, every year we issue a compendium of uh, awarded practices where you will find more details about about those good practices you will find uh, contact details there so do do check it out uh, there are some wonderful examples uh, in this in this compendium uh, and we will also issue compendium from this year so all the all the all the um, all the practices that you will hear about today will be will be included in the publication uh, in the next year and uh, when it comes to our our award we held a conference in in October uh, in Bratislava capital of Slovakia this year it was it was very very um, it was very interesting uh, interesting year we we've had over 20 applications, 20 submissions to the competition, out of which five, uh, five were awarded. We have a, a wonderful uh, care guidance program for pupils at, uh, at a primary school in the north of, at two primary schools in north of Slovakia. There was an, uh, uh, there was an, an online game. Um, also, we, uh, we awarded uh, an, an online, um, an online uh, educational fair. And uh, the last, uh, the last, um, um, well, it's a practice that was awarded was a training program for care counselors at schools and, and psychological centers, which, uh, which I will invite them to, to talk more in depth about this practice uh, shortly. And we, we've had, uh, well, 100 conference participants. So it was really a, a nice opportunity, a nice platform to, to meet and to, uh, and to, to get inspired. Um, so uh, this was all from my side. I mean, uh, if you want to know something more about K Guidance Awards, or if you want to maybe launch K Guidance Awards in your countries, uh, then just please contact me. We are open to share uh, to share uh, to share know-how. And I'll, I'd like to invite uh, representatives of the one of the awarded practices from Slovakia, uh, Katarina Stukovska and Katarina Knežova from the research uh, research institute. Uh, for uh, child psychology and, and pathopsychology to talk about to talk about their training pro the program which they launched for care guidance practitioners at schools and and, and psychological centers thank you very much for your attention ďakujem dobrý deň takže kto sme a ako dobrú prax sme tu prišli zdieľať je takže prichádzame z so vzdelávaním, ktoré sme pripravili v rámci národného projektu štandardizáciou systému poradenstva a prevencie inkluzií na trhu práce a prinášame program pre učiteľov a pedagógov na školách inovatívne prvky kerevé výchove a v kerevom poradenstve. Dobre. Prečo to robíme? Uh, robíme to preto, aby sme posunili hlavne životné zručnosti potrebné pre rozvoj kariéry uh, u našich účastníkov programu a účastníkmi našeho programu sú pedagógovia a učiteľia. A my si myslíme, alebo robíme to práve preto, že ak chceme, aby oni to prinášali svojim žiakom, svojim študentom, tak v prvom rade potrebujú oni sa v týchto kompetenciách a zručnostiach neustále teda vzdelávať a podporujeme tak ich celoživotné vzdelávanie a celoživotný rozvoj. A týmto našim programom aj prispievame k zmene nášho vzdelávacieho systému na školách, aby to kariérové poradenstvo sa stalo jeho neoddeliteľnou súčasťou a to, že prinášame uh, také myšlienky ako uh, prechod kariérového poradenstva od individuálneho poradenstva k uh, skupinovému poradenstvu. Od práce s dieťaťom mimo jeho prostredia pracujeme priamo na školách a podčas vyučovacích hodín alebo aj po vyučovaní od individuálneho poradenstvu k skupinovému poradenstvu a vytvárame tak multidisciplinárne týmy na školách v rámci karebeho poradenstva. A, a, uh -huh. Ja by som k tomuto ešte doplnila, že ak teda píšeme tu na tomto slajde, že prispievame k zmene v školskom systéme, tak je to aj kvôli tomu, že okrem teda poradcov a učiteľov na školách Ďalším takým doplňujúcim alebo, alebo teda podporným faktorom je aj to, že sme realizovali vzdelávanie pre poradcov z poradenských zariadení, ktorí vlastne majú byť nielen teda tí, ktorí pracujú s, s, so samotnými klientami a s deťmi teda a ich rodičmi, 
ale tou veľkou súčasťou ich úlohy je podporovať kariérových poradcov alebo učiteľov na školách. Takže tá sieť má vlastne dva takéto piliere, ktoré, ktoré teda, na ktoré sme sa paralelne sústredili v tomto projekte. Ďakujem. A to, to, som uspomen- to som uspomenula, teda, čo robíme, inšperujeme a vedieme a pomáhame k, teda, k zvanie pri zavádzaní tých zmien na školách. A ako to robíme? Robíme to formou zážitkového vzdelávania. Aj nám trošku zamiešala karty pandémia, kde sme si pripravili pri našich účastníkov vzdelávací program, ktorý sa skladal zo štyroch prezenčných dní školenia. A medzi tými školeniami nebolo to teda o školení, ale bolo to skôr o tréningu a rozvoji životných zručností. A zažitkovými aktivitami sme si tieto zručnosti s účastníkmi rozvíjali a prepájali s tým, čo už teda robia a vedia. A pomedzi to vzdelávanie, aby to nebolo len to, že si povieme niečo na vzdelávacom dni a tréningu a, idem zasa a zapadneme do toho kolobehu, tak každý účastník pracoval so svojím tutorom, mentorom a počas tej, tohto vzdelávania aj pracoval a konkrétne si skúšal aktivity, ktoré sme ich motivovali, aby sme robili a dostali aj takisto veľa ďalších aktivít, to znamená dištančných úloh, ktoré pracovali a tým pádom už prispievali k tej zmene aj to, že si to učili si priamo v praxi, že nebolo to len také školenie, ktoré sme si len povedali, že toto robte, ale si to prakticky skúšali a zavadzali rovno do praxe. A na konci, keď prešli to celé vzdelávanie aj s tými svojimi dištančnými úlohami, bola taká záverečná spoločná skúška, také odborné kolokvium, kde sme teda diskutovali opäť o ich individuálnych prácach a o tom, čo do toho systému oni priniesli. Takže bolo to veľmi praktické, veľmi naučné a dostávali sme fakt veľmi skvelé spätné väzby, že to nie je vzdelávanie, kde sme im on hovorili alebo dávali nejakú teóriu, ale bolo to veľmi, veľmi praktické a veľmi takto vedené takou hravou formou zažitkovej pedagogiky. A aj keď tu stojíme iba my dve, tak za, to, za týmto celým vzdelávaním je veľký tým ľudí, takže to sme my, ktorí sme ich teda či už lektorovali, alebo tutorovali a pracovali s našimi účastníkmi tréningu. A ako som už spomínala, pre koho to robíme, boli to nielen samotní učiteľia na školách, ale boli to aj všetci odborní a pedagogickí zamestnanci, to znamená, či to boli asistenti, ktorí pracujú s pedagógmi, či to boli vychovávateľia, majstri odborného výcviku, či to boli uh, um, psychológovia na školách, školskí psychológovia, teda všetkým týmto. A takisto tento vzdelávací program sme už robili od materských škôl, od základnej školy, pre odborné stredné školy a pre gymnázia. A čo je teda našim poslaním a na čo, keď sme všetky aktivity, ktoré sme robili a keď sme sa zameriavali na to, prečo to robíme, tak stále e, sme mali na, na mysli e, dieťa a to bolo to naše, prečo to robíme a to, že tvoríme multidisciplinárny prístup k dieťaťu a to všetko do neho spadá, tak to máme zvizualizované. Ako vidíte na tomto slajde, musím si to dať nižšie. Ako vidíte na tomto slajde, tak našim vzdelávaním prišlo vyše tisíc účastníkov. A ja by som možno vyzdvihla to, že čo bolo také obzvlášť inovatívne pre nás na Slovensku, neviem, či je to tak aj v iných krajinách, ale to bolo to, že sme vytvorili aj alternatívu programu pre účastníkov z materských škôl, väčšinou teda sa nám zúčastnili učiteľky z materských škôl a, a vlastne bola to taká pre mnohých nová téma. My sme išli teda v súlade s, s myšlienkou celoživotného vzdelávania aj vlastne kariérovej výchovy už od teda skorého ranného veku. A išlo tam o to, aby sme aj trošička otvorili túto tému a vysvetlili ľuďom, že v rámci kariérovej výchovy teraz to neznamená, že ideme pri malých deťoch sa sústrediť na to, aby sme ich nejako profilovali, ale že naozaj v rámci hry alebo iných aktivít, ktoré sa v materskej škole dejú, aby sme sa sústredili na seba poznávanie dieťaťa, možno na vyzdvihovanie jeho silných stránok alebo všímanie si záujmov, a, a vlastne takýmito praktickými hrovými aktivitami ich, uh, ich posilňovali uh, v tom uh, jednak seba poznávaní a jednak aj budovaní uh, zručnosti, uh, či už sú to zručnosti pri riadenie kariéry alebo celkovo socioemocionálne zručnosti. Um. 
Čo, čo je asi zaujímavé a dôležité povedať, je, je, že vlastne tá spokojnosť účastníkov bola veľmi vysoká a aj keď sme merali nárast kompetencií, tak u vlastne všetkých sledovaných položiek tento nárast sa, sa ukázal. My sme sa zamerali na kompetencie ako spolupráca, tvorivosť, komunikácia a plánovanie. No a takým asi pre nás najväčším ocenením a zároveň aj takým dôkazom toho, že to vzdelávanie pre mnohých ľudí malo zmysel je práve to, že tu dnes aj s nami sedia účastničky nášho programu, ktoré zároveň aj teda boli ocenené v rámci ceny, teda národnej ceny kariérového poradenstva. Čiže keď teda by sme mohli aj im zatlieskať k tomu, že sa teda zapojili do našej siete kariérových poradcov a dokázali vlastne sa nadchnúť pre túto tému a na tých, škol, na tých svojich školách pre deti urobiť viac k tomu, aby, aby teda smerovali k takému spokojnému životu. Takže aj pre kolegyne potlesk poprosím. Áno, a už len takto na záver vám teda ďakujeme kolegyňam aj všetkým. A prečo sme sa teda rozhodli vzdelávať pedagógov a zamerať sa práve na, na školy? Lebo si myslíme teda, že len fakľa, ktorá horí, môže teda ďalej zapalovať a ďalej teda prinášať tie úspechy. A keď aj sme neprinesli nejakú veľkú evolúciu do toho slovenského školstva, tak takou pomalou teda revolúciou a takou pomalou evolúciou prinášame tie kročiky, že zapracováme to do toho školského systému. A musím povedať aj za mňa, že... Veľa, veľa škôl a veľa, veľa pedagógov už robí veľmi dobrú prácu a robí to kariérové poradenstvo na školách v zmysle rozvoju životných zručností, takže to sa nám podarilo a to je našim hlavným cieľom. Ďakujeme. Thank you very much. Um, now we move on to another presentation of a good practice, which can also be found on the Euroguidance website. Um, I invite Ms. Andrea Deak, principal of Baja Josef High School in Hadvian, uh, Hungary. Uh, the title of the presentation is What Should I Be uh, When I Grow Up? Hello, everybody. Before starting my presentation, let me express my gratitude and how honored I am to be here with you today. Uh, our good practice is title is What Should I Become? What Will I Be When I Grow Up? And it contains opportunities of innovation in career guidance. My name is Andrea Deak. I am the principal of a high school called the Josef Bajza Secondary Grammar School in Hotvan, Hungary. But actually, the original presentation was made by my deputy principal, Kristina Veresnyi Kalcsu, and we are very proud of her work. We are a secondary high school of 520 students and almost 60 uh, tutors and teachers. And we Hungarians, as you know, if you have already visited Hungary, are very well known for our hospitality and also for the fact that wherever we go, we take presents for those people who we are visiting. So I've brought you some presents here today. You can choose from two options, a rubber bracelet, which, is, which contains the name of my school, or a key holder. So I'm going to start with Petra as our host for thanking him. Petr, I'm going to start with you as our host, thanking you for your hospitality. So you can choose one option from here. Okay, I'm going to briefly talk about uh, uh, introducing the practice, then the general goals, then distinguish between career orientation or career choice, then of course talk about the goals within the program, the individual and institutional aspects of the program, the general program itself, and uh, the focus on the career orientation team. Our motto at school is uh, that it is very important so that a person can be enthusiastic about something, but that field of interest must be dear to one's heart. 
Now, the purpose of the whole process is to help our students in accordance with their career choice. There are three main goals that we focus on. The first one is self-image, because it is very important uh, for our students, and I think for everybody, first to get to know themselves before moving on to a choice and uh, uh, focus on something and also help students understand the relationship between occupations and professions. The second main goal is uh, we are a secondary school and uh, kind of a transition between uh, primary school and tertiary studies that we focus on tertiary studies and uh, students may get to know the, all the requirements and all the uh, options they can have at universities. It is also very important for us because uh, during the last two academic years, year 11 and 12, they get to choose two faculties, we call them faculties, uh, actually these are advanced courses in two subjects which are needed as entrance exams for further studies. So that's why it is very important to get to know the rules of tertiary education and also to have a clear view on today's job market, which is rather far from them, especially at seventh grade or ninth grade. Still, it is very important for us to show them some view on it. So we must make a distinction between career orientation and career choice, because career orientation is uh, all the ability, the skills, the personal competencies that are required to be able to uh, navigate within the person-profession surroundings uh, triangle or environment. Uh, also, it contains our knowledge on different professions, on ourselves and on society, on the job market surrounding us. Actually, career choice is the outcome, the result of career orientation. So it is very important to focus first on career orientation, as I have mentioned, and self-knowledge, self-improvement. And then uh, the student reaches the point of choosing a proper profession for him or herself uh, that suits his or her personality and also fits the job market so that he or she can lead a success successful way of life afterwards. In practice, it lasts for four to six academic years. First, it, we started the project on four years, but uh, we have had six graders uh, since, uh, uh, no, for, for three years. It is also very important for us as a goal to disseminate our knowledge, our focus, uh, what uh, achievements we have on this field, uh, on conferences like this, of course, within the school, within our town, within the territory, because teachers, fellow teachers, are pretty much interested in this whole process. We combine the individual and the institutional goal. Of course, it is important to have student uh, career orientation and goal, but also there is a, a decree of the Ministry of Human Resources which ordained to organize one academic uh, day throughout the year on career orientation. So it's kind of compulsory as well, but that's not why we are doing this. I have also uh, chosen what uh, our, our moderator, Paul, has chosen this morning. Choose a job that you like doing so that you will not have to work for the rest of your, uh, your life, because I totally agree with this. But, not, but only few people are able to reach this point, I think. However, we are working on it for our students and, of course, for uh, ourselves. So it is very important to, to focus for further studies and career choices, as I have mentioned before. And also, we like using innovative methods within career orientation, like interactive table talks in small groups or one-on-one -on -one conversations, team activities, quizzes, company visits, developing programs, and Students pretty much like theme days in our school. For this, of course, it is not a one-person job. We had to establish a career orientation team, which not only uh, 
consists of teachers, but also uh, from contributors and other colleagues. Of course, it is very important to have enthusiastic and open-minded teachers within the group, but we reached out for organizations like the Pedagogical Professional Services operating in Havash County, my town, Hotvan, is uh, situated in Havash County, or the Chamber of Industry, or the University of Hungarian Agriculture and Life Sciences, and the career headquarters of uh, Karo Esterházy Catholic University. I must mention the name of Iboya Federic, who was a colleague of uh, Kristina Veresnyi Kalcsó, and actually works for the pedagogical uh, services, and is very open-minded, very willing to help us. We are very lucky to have a social helper also at our school, who works for the child welfare service of Hotvam, and is eager to help us on an everyday basis. And of course, form teachers and uh, our school psychologists are also involved in the whole process. Now let's see the detailed plan in short. When we started, we used six months for preparation, gathering all the professional materials, surveys uh, that uh, we thought might be needed. Also, we were attending a lot of conferences and courses online and offline. And we were reaching out for outside partners, like the partners I have already mentioned. Of course, we had to introduce the whole process, the whole practice to our teacher staff as well. Now it starts in ninth, ninth grade. First semester is on self-knowledge. Uh, we established, of course, the career orientation team. Sorry, I might need some water. <coughs> in the meantime, I keep talking. And it was about encouraging pledges, like a brainstorming activity. Then, as I have mentioned, knowing themselves is, thank you. is very important, but knowing each other is also uh, of the same importance. So we organized Freshman's Week for our ninth graders and Freshman's Day when they got to know each other and they competed with each other. We started organizing lectures and programs of self-knowledge three times 90 minutes because we have three classes at ninth grade. The second semester is on self-improvement we continue with the workshops in small groups, three times per class. Students fill in online survey forms and then evaluate them in a one-on-one -on -one conversation. And also, we organize workshops for them on study methods because we think that uh, at primary school, <clears throat> it is not always the case to learn uh, the proper study methods which suits their personalities. This is the first time when we evaluate the career orientation team as well, within the teacher staff, with the parents, and with the students as well. In 10th grade, it's, uh, in the, during the first semester, it's about students' attitude concerning uh, studying and career orientation. So we collect uh, surveys, study forms on career orientation, and we start these professional consultations with the uh, uh, outer partners and uh, the inner so-called partners as well. We also hold uh, workshops for them, <clears throat> and uh, the outcome of these workshops is a project entitled My Potential Professions. The second semester is about motivation, because this is the time when uh, people or students have to choose two advanced courses from, for the next uh, academic year. <coughs> so we, we have a lecture on these advanced or optional classes, and also it's important to inform the parents on these uh, advanced classes. We also summarize, summarize for parents uh, the work of the career orientation team. Uh, I have mentioned that uh, theme days are very popular among students. One of these theme days is the motivation day. We have uh, some idols, some foregoers, some career ambassadors, some ex boyza students who revisit us and give lectures on their work. 
11th grade first semester is on career knowledge because now they are studying advanced classes. So we gather material and surveys on career knowledge for them. And of course, we continue with the lectures and the workshops. Also, in January, there is a kind of career fair in Budapest called Educatio. So we visit them with 11th and 12th uh, graders. Which I like the best are the following two semesters, the job shadow program for 11th graders. Uh, when uh, we have some volunteers, some professionals from the job market who volunteer to have one, two, or three students during the students' summer holidays, and they follow them throughout the whole working day as shadows, and they can decide whether they like uh, this profession or it is too, uh, too much for them. With this, the Junior Achievement Hungary is a great uh, help for us. It is about generating a whole database that we can use afterwards. It is also the time when uh, students visit uh, plants and factories like the OD factory in Dürer or the Mercedes in Kecskemét or, the, um, uh, or at, they also went to the Hungrener, for example, at uh, Szabad Egyháza. So this is a right time to uh, visit uh, future workplaces. And also, during the summer holiday, with the help of the Career Office, Fo Office Foundation, we organize a career orientation camp. <coughs> then the second great part is the Student Shadow Program, with the help of the Catholic University I have already mentioned. It is the same program, but they follow uh, university students. And here is the time when we organize Career Orientation Day. Actually, it's going to be this Friday when we introduce universities, professions, dual forms of study. Uh, this time, 15 universities are going to come and 52 speakers. The last semester is about career choice, when they are able to make this result, the career choice. There is also a meeting for parents and students about uh, the e-entrance exams, and we help them coordinate uh, the registration for, for final exams. So uh, what I must uh, uh, emphasize is that it is a program based on our students' needs and it connects personal and institutional goals, but it needs uh, continuous uh, self-reflection -ref from us and development. And it, of course, involves a lot of organizing and a lot of work from this team. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much for that interesting practice. Um, I now invite uh, my colleagues from Serbia, Ramona and Milena from Euroguide in Serbia, who will be presenting uh, um, the examples of good practice in career guidance systems in Serbia that have been awarded in the National Career Guidance Awards. Uh, hello everyone, um, we are representatives of your guidance center in Serbia. My name is Ramona and uh, today with me is my colleague Milena. Uh, so uh, this year uh, our country, our Euro guidance national center, um, uh, have organized, has organized the seventh national career guidance awards and uh, the main aim of the National Career Guidance Awards uh, is the promotion uh, of individuals and organizations who have developed uh, different programs, activities, tools, and methods uh, for career guidance and counseling services. Uh, and um, many organizations and practitioners were invited to submit their practices, uh, of, uh, their examples of good practices. And uh, those were organizations and practitioners from education, youth work, employment, and social services. Uh, so the call for application uh, was open from uh, May to September 2022, and uh, there was a total of 16 applications received. 
so as in the previous years, we had our selection committee. Uh, the selection committee uh, was formed of uh, different stakeholders uh, from sectors that uh, are involved in career guidance system, uh, such as uh, the Ministry of Youth and Sports, uh, Qualification Agency, uh, NGO Belgrade, Belgrade, Belgrade uh, Open School, and um, the Your Guidance Centers from Croatia, Montenegro and Serbia. Uh, so, uh, our selection committee uh, has decided to uh, give three awards uh, to acknowledgements uh, as well as to honorably mention two uh, examples of good practices. And uh, the results of the, competitions, uh, of the competition were announced at the annual National Euro Guidance Conference titled uh, Career Guidance and Counseling in the Republic of Serbia and Europe. Uh, the, co the conference was held uh, in hybrid format this year in Belgrade uh, on October the 12th. Uh, so when we talk about the awards, uh, the first award was given to uh, the practice titled Employment Skills Training for Women in Safe Shelters. Um, it, uh, it was the practice uh, developed by uh, organization Caritas Zrenjanin. Uh, and uh, their target groups were uh, women who are victims of domestic violence and trafficking accommodated in the safe shelters. So in this photo, you can see one of the workshops uh, that, uh, that was de developed by, uh, during the program. Uh, so the main aim uh, of this program uh, was to uh, de um, develop skills for individual job seeking uh, for women in safe shelters so they can build independence after leaving a safe space and uh, return to uh, their everyday activities. So workshops mainly focused on uh, recognizing their personal threats, uh, for, um, to, to recognize uh, uh, possible uh, job opportunities, connecting with uh, possible employers uh, and uh, to um, uh, 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 recognize the importance of getting and retaining a job. Uh, so uh, in this, uh, during this program, a facilitator's guide also was developed. Uh, and on this photo, you can see also the cover page of um, this facilitator's guide. Uh, and in this guide, you can find uh, also all activities, tools, and methods uh, that were developed during this program. Uh, for now, the facilitator's guide uh, is uh, only in Serbian. Uh, and when we talk about our second award, uh, the second award was given to uh, the practice titled Internal Employment Fair. Um, this practice was developed uh, by secondary vocational school, school Kragujevac. Uh, and uh, their target groups were secondary school students. Uh, on this photo, you can see uh, one of the uh, job interviews um, that was held in, uh, in internal employment fair. Uh, and uh, the main aim uh, of this program, this uh, event, was uh, to empower the final year students to explore employment opportunities in the local community. Uh, so, uh, students learned how to create their uh, CVs and uh, how to represent uh, their qualifications and skills to possible employers. Uh, and uh, this was the opportunity for local companies also um, to present themselves in this internal employment fair. And uh, during this program, uh, students, um, as I said, they learned how to write their CV, uh, how to um, present their qualification, their skills, and uh, the, the big role um, uh, is um, for the school career gui guidance and counseling team who uh, invite possible employers, who um, inform the students about venue and schedule of the fair, and who helped students to, uh, to present themselves to the possible employers. So uh, when we talk about third award, uh, I'll pass the floor to my colleague Milena. Thank you. Uh, our third award uh, is promoting youth employability through internships, uh, developed by UNICEF in Serbia. Uh, it is dedicated to NET youngsters, uh, which means uh, young people up to 30 years. Yes, in Serbia you're young until 30, 
uh, and uh, people who are uh, not in education, training, or employment. Uh, and uh, this, uh, sorry, <laughs> wrong slide. Uh, and this uh, practice is really important because it uh, gives opportunity to young people, especially young people from uh, vulnerable groups, uh, to get opportunity uh, to be engaged in internships and uh, some additional trainings to develop their skills uh, important for uh, the labor market. Uh, you can see uh, this platform, Bira Muspech, which means I choose success, uh, which is developed to connect young people with possible employers uh, to be engaged in internships or some additional trainings. Uh, this platform is uh, available online on uh, biramuspek.rs. So uh, if you're interested, you can find it and explore more. Uh, all these free uh, awarded uh, uh, practices are uh, actually now uh, available also in database, uh, which Dorian talked about. Besides these awards, we also have two acknowledgments and uh, two honorably mentioned practices. The first one is called uh, Career 402, and it's developed by Organization Digital Initiative in Serbia, and it's kind of mentorship programs for specialized uh, grades of secondary year students in IT sector. The second one, uh, there is a problem with the slide. It's my job, my future. Uh, in Serbian, moj posao, moja budućnost. And it's uh, in all, a knowledge for uh, recognizing the opportunities of a famous uh, platform, e twinning platform, for developing uh, career guidance opportunities. It was an international project for seven uh, countries, uh, secondary year uh, students for, uh, from these countries, you can see uh, their flags on uh, the slide. And we also have two honorably mentioned practices uh, for some specific aspects which uh, can uh, opportunity to be developed more. Uh, first one is find your career code developed by technical school from Knjaževac, uh, which is actually dedicated to uh, develop uh, um, your, uh, how to say, digital skills. You can scan QR code. And after that, students uh, get opportunity to develop uh, their education and job opportunities using online platforms. And the second one, also we have a problem with the slide, uh, is called My Company, Moje Preduzeće in Serbian, uh, which is dedicated to uh, elementary, year school, um, elementary school students. Uh, actually, they simulated how companies worked. And through that simulation, how companies and uh, uh, corporation works, uh, they um, develop their skills, kind of uh, job shadowing, etc. And on this picture, you can see one of the directors proudly sitting in his office. That's uh, how he imagined companies and uh, directors' companies uh, works. And actually, uh, that's all from us. Uh, you can find more information on uh, Euroguidance Serbia uh, site, euroguidance.rs, and also send us some email <laughs> for further information on our email. And thank you for your attention. Um, thank you, everyone. We have now come to the end of the presentations. We hope that you were inspired and we now encourage you to navigate through the Euroguidance website and um, uh, log on to the section where there is, the, where are the, there is the database on good practices. Have a look, get inspired and share them also uh, with your colleagues. Um, and if you would like to present any good practices from your national context, feel free to contact also your uh, Euroguidance uh, network um, in your country. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.